born in a small town in Iowa called Granger. Jenning was raised on the family farm located just outside of, of Granger. In fact, one of the farms uh, fields that's the, the corner of the small town of Granger. Jenning was noted for his ability for shucking the corn in the fields but try and tried his best. If there was a wagon full of corn, here's at the end of the day, it was considered a good day. In school, Jenning was on the basketball team. Even though he was small, that didn't stop him from working and sliding around the, the larger opponents. Jenning was a hard worker both at home and in school. He liked to complete what he started. That was the great, that was a great blessing for his mother. Jenning had this goal and it was to be a Marine. He did his best to add weight and tried to stretch his height. I believe he, he, he did. I can remember at least a month or so where he was trying to have more food so he could gain weight. in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. And I will say to the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God, into whom I trust. Surely He will save you from the fowler's snare, from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with His feathers, and under His wings you will find refuge, and His faithfulness will be your shield and your rampart. Thank you, God, for honoring us today with this memory, memory of family, a memory of honor and duty and sacrifice that we grow in a greater meaning of family. And we say thank you as we come to know each one better than before. And we just say thank you. Four years ago, the Marines contacted me to see if I knew anything about my uncle Jim. And I didn't know very much. Six months later, they asked me for a DNA, of which I gladly gave to them. I did not hear anything for four years. And about a month later, they called me. They found him. And they identified him. You know, DNA 
is going to be a tremendous asset to bringing home our soldiers, our loved ones. I visualized my brother in his grave on the island with some of the other men. I know that when they located him, uh, for some reason or other, they were buried over to the side near a fence. Now, that island's being torn, torn up with new houses and, and, and construction and things. But they had not moved over there and they noticed this. And so all the so Marines that were in that, their bodies were still intact. So Chattings, he was still intact. They were able to identify him. He still had his teeth. And Marla Sue, uh, sip the Marines her blood test like two or three years ago. We had some communication with them. They thought they had found his body then and they hadn't. But they still had her records on. So they were able to identify with found with his blood to her. And then she told him told him that I was the last one still alive in in, in the family. Within the first week these two pits had uncovered the first of the individuals and in what we soon confirmed with the infamous row D. Now this is a fourth row of indiv individuals at a cemetery named 33 who had never been recovered after the war. And the row was so elusive, actually history flight has been looking for it since the project began over 10 years ago, that many people thought it didn't exist, that it was a clerical error, that this row D was something else, that the bodies weren't there. But I am happy to tell you that Private Channing Robert Whitaker was the second individual buried in Road 